Hello team! So in our last video I went over the anatomy of a level and in this video I want to try and make a level from scratch. I was particularly inspired to do this by Noah's recent idea for making a level out of castle segments and it looks like uh, you're not too far away from making a level Noah so I figure if I show how to do it you actually might be able to come up with one all on your own or at least we can move toward that goal because it's really not too complicated but you gotta know a few things so let's uh, let's try to make a simple level so the idea that I have for a level right now is I want to make a level that's based around a corridor so I want sort of a rectangular profile of the level instead of a tube I want a corridor that goes on and on and I want to make it look sort of like a very simple primitive Tron slash holodeck look like with a with a really bright grid work on it and then I want to put some obstacles in that level using spawners and here's what we need to do to make that happen let's pull up I put up a little uh, description here of the steps so first we're gonna make a corridor cross-section mesh in Cinema 4D so we're gonna use Cinema 4D just to make a model of a particular section of the of the level which will then be repeated again and again to make this endless corridor then we're gonna have to export it and bring it into unity and we're gonna add a material to it and then once we've done that we have enough to to make a, a simple level so we just need to create a segment with the new model uh, very similar to what we saw in the last video with the demo trench segments then we need to make a sequence out of that segment in this case there's only a single segment in the sequence, but uh, it'll uh, prepare the way for us to make variations when we want to have uh, more than one segment in a sequence. And then we're going to make a new level so that we can display the sequence. And right at this point, we will have something that we can fly through, but there will be nothing in it in terms of obstacles or things to fly around. So then we'll go back into Cinema 4D and create a simple obstacle export and texture it and then uh, apply that obstacle to the segment with a scatter surface spawner and once we've got that we'll have something that I think will be fun to fly through so let's start in Cinema 4D here I'm just going to open up Cinema 4D and if we do file new project here the first thing to do is go to edit project settings which actually I think comes up by default when you make a new project but it's important that we set our project scale to meters and by doing this you'll be able to export at regular scale or just export without any modifications to this and then import into unity at a 1.0 multiplier and you'll get a one-to-one -one relationship between Cinema 4D and unity so do that first so a project scale is one meter one meters and so to make a segment of the or a cross-section of the level let's just add a cube and right now the basic scale uh, to basic starting scale should be 1000 in all directions so we'll say 1000 X 1000 Y and 1000 Z now I want this level to be wider than it is high, so let's make this 2,000 meters. So just to give you an idea, the base of the demo trench, the opening scene, the floor is 1,000 meters wide, and the banks on either side are another 1,000 meters. So that whole level is 3,000 meters wide, but uh, you can't really fly on the banks, so really it's only 1,000 meters wide. So this one's actually going to be a little bit wider, so we're going to go size X. 2,000 meters. There we go. So now in order to make this a cross-section, all we really need to do is make it editable. And once we've made it editable, we can go and select the faces that make up the front and the back. And since we're going to be inside of this at all times, we don't need to see it from the outside but we do need to see it from the inside so right now the normals are all facing out so I'm just gonna select everything and go to tools or where's that mesh normals reverse normals 
Now the normals are facing in, so in Unity you won't be able to see this from the outside, you'll be able to see it only from the inside, and in many cases you'll want to actually duplicate this to create an outer surface too, so you can see it from the outside, like for instance if there's a, a way to fly outside of it, but there's not in this case. So we're just going to be inside of this, and so that's really all that we need to do to create the basic cross-section of the level. So let's take this and we will save it as, or actually let's create a material first. And we'll just call it corridor. And it doesn't really need to be any particular color. I like to make them primary colors because th the colors do come through into Unity. And I'm just going to assign this to the cube. And I don't believe we need any, we don't need any regions or anything like that. We don't need one material on this thing. So now I'm going to save. And the, the easiest way to do it that I found is to do save project with assets. In this case, there are no assets, but just in case there, there are, it's a good habit to do that. And so we go to our project folder, playground. This is the thing, this is the root of what we have checked out from the plastic repo. And we go into assets models. And let's just call this Corridor 2000. Now we could import this right in to Unity if everyone on the project has Cinema 4D, but everyone does not. So what I do at this point is we go and we export what we just saved as FBX and just hit save. Defaults, just leave it at the defaults there. Now if we go into Unity, there it is, it loaded it in. You can see it for a moment there, loading it in, and there it is. It's just been added, corridor 2000 meters. And it looks a little weird here in the inspector because the normals are flipped, so that's why you don't see the top of it, but that's okay. And we want to make sure to select the second one because this is the FBX. And you want to go up here to the scale factor and change it to 1 because we don't need to scale it down because we set our scale properly in Cinema 4D. And as far as colliders on this, let's do generate colliders on it and hit apply. Now if we drag this here, there we have a segment. And it, it put a collider on it, a mesh collider on it. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to add a material to this. So if we look here, it's already got this material called corridor, which we could modify and in fact, let's do that. I'll show you how to do that. See, it came with a material right here. It's, it's bundled in the materials folder. Now, it's generally a good idea to reuse materials whenever possible because you get a big performance increase in Unity by reusing the same material. So you don't want to remake materials every single time. But in this case, I'll do it. And so you'll see here's our blue material we brought in, which is set to be diffuse with a blue color. So first thing I'm going to do because we want to make this thing look cool, let's change it to Marmoset Specular IBL. And that will make it interact with the lighting environment. And for the diffuse texture, let's look at the grids that we have. And so I have a couple grid textures in here, which are just very, very simple grid textures. That's all it is, it's a cross. But, if we get in here and start tweaking these things, let's set the diffuse color to white, and we want to turn down the specular big time. And then we want to change the Fresnel strength. So you see how the, the sides get darker in that way, but you still got a little bit of the, a little bit of specularity on there. And we want to change the tiling to be, let's see, 10 by 10. Oh, it's starting to look like something cool. 
or let's say 10 by it's a little bit longer than is it's wider than is long so let's try 15 by 10 be nice to get them to meet up nicely at the edges so 10 by 10 does it now our perception of size and scale in the level is very much dependent upon how we set this so if I make this rather 20 by 20 all of a sudden it looks like we're in a sort of a bigger space let's try 20 by 20 and we'll see how it goes from there and we can play around with the Fresnel and the specular sharpness let's just try that so now we've got this segment or not was not really a segment yet it's just a mesh really so here we are and we're at zero 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 it's scaled to one we haven't moved it or anything like that we've got a collider we can get rid of this animator component and it brings that in we don't need that and then what we want to do is make a prefab of this so if we go down here into our prefabs see this is just the model but we want to turn it into a unity prefab and we let's see here where do we want to put this in items let's make a new folder call it corridor and we're just going to take and drag this into that folder now we have a prefab so now we can delete it <laughs> so now we want to make a segment out of that so what we do is we go game object create empty and we'll call this I'll put it at some weird positions I'm gonna go back here and make sure that it's at zero 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 and there it is and we'll, we'll call this corridor only segment and what we want to do is we want to do two things first we want to add the corridor prefab as a child of this segment where'd it go Oh, there it is we were just zoomed in so we've got this blank game object that we dragged the prefab that we just made a few minutes ago onto now we're going to go up here to the corridor only segment and to make it a segment that can be used in a sequence and therefore in our level we have to add a component to it of type segment it's a script that we have called segment so I'm just going to add that and here we're going to we have to put in the width and the length and the width is 2000 and the length is 1000 and there are no spawners on it so that's all we need to do so now we can make a segment prefab so down here in segments let's make a oh actually I have a folder here called corridor cuz I was playing with this before but I didn't really like the result of it so I decided to redo it here in the tutorial so we're gonna drag the corridor only segment here into our prefabs folder in the the segments section there we go now we need to make a sequence out of that segment and yes this seems a little redundant when you're only when there's only a single segment but it comes into play as soon as we have more than one segment we want to alternate and this is just the way that it works right now it's not too complicated so we're just gonna create empty and we're gonna call this oh, also it also set the transform to something weird when I added it so I'm gonna set it back to zero 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 and we're gonna call this corridor sequence one and we're gonna add a component to it of type sequence there it is and segments 
the size is not going to be 0, it's going to be 1. We're only going to put 1 in here, so you have to change it to 1, and that will give you a single element array. And we're going to take that segment that we, that we made and drag it into here. So now we have a sequence of a single segment, and we don't need to change anything in here. That's all we that's all we got to do. So now we're going to take and put that sequence into a folder under sequences in prefabs. We get rid of that old one. And here we have to just drag the sequence into that folder. And there it is. So now we should be set to make a level with that corridor repeating. Let's delete quarter sequence one from the hierarchy. Now here if we look at our game, you'll see here's our level that we have uh, for the SVVR demo, and since we're, we're working in this Unity project, what we're going to do is we're just going to add another one. And to do that, you could just duplicate this level, delete everything from in here, and sort of uh, and just add the, the quarter sequence, but rather what we can do is in prefabs, let me close all this up. In prefabs here, in levels, there is a empty level template which is ready to go. So we're just going to take and drag that into our game. Now we have an empty level here. And let's change this to be corridor level. We'll call it 03 corridor level. One of the features I believe in Unity 4.5, which we're not on yet, is that they finally fixed it so that the ordering is not alphabetical anymore. But uh, this is why we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, just because it alphabetizes things in the hierarchy and I like to keep things in order like this. So now we have a new corridor level here. So if we look over here, I mean, remember looking at the SVVR level, you see over here there's all these sequences and skies defined and an audio source defined, and that's what makes up the level. But the corridor level has none of that. So we're still going to keep the, B the BPM the same, 8 bars, horizon distance all the same, the player is the rift wing still the same, and everything else is all set here, we don't need to change anything, starting speed, etc. But what we want to change is sequences. We want to add a sequence, so we're going to say sequences size is going to be 1, and then we want to go find that sequence that we just made here in Corridor and drag the sequence into the first element. There it is. And, sky, and skies, too. Let's add a sky to it. And so we're going to just add one sky. And if we look in our prefabs, skies, we have the various lighting environments that we've been working with. Let's take and drag the Milky Way in the outer space one. We're not going to see much of the sky. We're really just using it to generate the lighting inside of the corridor. But we'll, we'll try this. Milky Way. And for the audio, just to put something in there, we'll use the existing. Which one is it? We'll use, we'll use the existing track from the first, from the SVVR level. There's our audio source, and I think that should be ready to go. Let's see what happens. First off, let's save our, save our scene, and then let's also take and add this level to our levels folder in prefabs, because we essentially, essentially just made a new one, and there it is. So now, if we go here, and we s enable, we activate this new level, let's see what happens.
bad, huh? That's pretty cool. But it's kind of empty. And so our only real sense of speed comes from the scrolling by of the grid texture. So let's, let's add some obstacle of some sort. Let's go back into Cinema 4D. And sometimes I like to build something right in here just to get the sense of, to get the scale right. Let's try, let's just pick something. Let's pick a torus. Let's put the torus on its, on its side. And let's make it 250 meters wide and a little thicker. And then let's, let's delete these thong tags here. I'm not sure whether these translate into Unity or not at all, but I like to see what we're working with in terms of the actual polys. And in our case, the lower the better. It looks really cool, and frame rate is uh, a factor here. So let's just lower this way down until it looks pretty cool. There we go, six. That's kind of cool looking. Make this 75. Okay, now my idea here is that let's make it a little bit bigger. 350. My idea is that depending upon how we place these in the level and scatter them, you could either place it place it like this, you could place it like this, you could place it like this. Or you could even you know, place them in the air or on the ceiling or all over. But let's just see what happens if we can get, let's see if we can get something like this scattered on the level. So we have something cool to fly through. Let's make this a little thicker. I, I think I like it at 100. There we go. And the segments, how about eight? I really like seeing the slight variations of how light plays as you go from, for instance, eight segments to nine segments to ten segments. Or there's ten. See, with ten, you get that straight forward facing face facing directly at us. With nine, you don't. With eleven, you don't. Let's go with 10. Okay, so we want to take this torus and we want to put it at 0, 0, 0. Let's put it in the center of the world. Wait, why can't I do that? Maybe it's because I need to Make it editable. What's going on there? Why can't I move that to zero, zero, zero? What am I doing wrong here? Let's look. There we go. I had to be in object mode. Zero, zero, zero. Now we're going to delete our corridor. And we're going to rename this to be Taurus. And we'll leave our origin, the origin of the object, right in the middle. Uh, many times there's times when you might want to drop the origin to the, to the base, but in this, We'll leave it in the middle and we'll use our spawner to position this, this thing around the level. So now what we have to do is we just have to, again, save project with assets. Assets, models. And we'll call this
Taurus ten side. Taurus ten sides, two fifty. It's a ten sided Taurus, two hundred fifty meters. You could reuse that for all sorts of things. Now we want to export it as FBX. And go back into Unity. So now let's take our segment, the corridor segment, and drag that out. Here it is. So now in order to spread that torus around, we have to add a spawner. So to the corridor, we're going to add a game object, an empty game object. And we're going we're to add it to the corridor, and we're going to call it torus spawner. And now we're going to add a component of type scatter surface spawner. And we're going to, oh, we have to, uh, we actually, have to, actually, before we do this, we have to bring the item itself in. So let me hide this segment for a minute, and let's make a prefab out of that model that, that we just made. Here it is, Taurus 10 side 250. We're going to go in here, change this to 1, and we're also going to generate colliders on this. Now let's bring that out into the field here, and, and there we are. Let's give it a, let's change its material. And again, I'll make a new one here. Marmoset. We'll go to Marmoset, Specular IBL again. Crank up the Fresnel a little bit, and the sharpness, lower the specular color. Now let's take another grid, let's take a blue grid, and change the tiling, ooh, that's going to be weird, 10, ha, <laughs> there's some funky stuff going on here with the UVs, but for now we're going to go with it and call it artistic style. Let's see if I can change that at all. Yeah, this is one thing with Cinema 4D, the UV mapping gets a little weird sometimes. We'll, we'll just leave it for now. Still looks like a pretty cool object. And who's to say it's not actually designed that way? So now, what else do we need to do to this? I'm trying to remember if there's anything we need to do to the torus itself. I don't think that there is. We, oh, we can remove this animator component from it. We've got a collider on it. I believe all we need to do is put it in our prefab library. So down here in prefabs, under items in corridor we're going to call this torus obstacle and we're going to drag it here into the items folder there it is oh there's one other thing that we need to do and that is we need to go up here to our tags and layers layer, you have to make this since it's an obstacle, we have to put it in the obstacle layer. This is for working with collision detection between the player and the obstacle. That's how we know that we should run into it. And we also tag it as prop. And there we go. That is now ready to be used by a spawner. So now we can delete the torus obstacle from the scene. Go back up here to our segment enable it so we can see it. And we've got this spawner that we added, which is just an empty game object right now attached to the corridor. And here there's this 
place for item prefab. We're going to now drag that item into the item prefab. This is the thing we're going to spawn. And let's say we want to spawn three to five of them. And we won't make them out, make them random. We have to set this raycast mass to everything. That's so it, it basically what we do is we use a raycast to shoot downward until we hit something. And so by setting to everything, it'll use the first thing it hits, which in this case is going to be the corridor itself. And we'll start with no offset. That should put it right in the middle. Now the other thing we need to do is we need to define the area where we want this to spawn. And the way that we do that is by adding this surface spawner here, we've added we've got code that will actually draw. See as I make this bigger, let's make it let's make it two thousand. You'll see that, that line there by one thousand. See because we put this on here, we actually it draws this bounding box. And we can drop this down. It doesn't need you don't really need to drop it down, but as long as it's above the surface, that's fine. So now what that's saying is that we want to create three to five of these things. Every time we create a new segment, we want three to five tori in this area. So you could very easily define multiple regions to get more, to have more artistic control over where you want these things. You could put one on the left, one on the right, etc. But we're not going to do that right now. I believe this will work right now if we go up here to the segment. And see it says spawners size zero. It's because there were no spawners. But if we hit clear on here, it should see that we now have a spawner and it should fill it in. There it is. It now our segment is now aware of that spawner. So now if we say move, there we go. Now you see how that's at the edge right there and it's overlapping. And we we don't want that necessarily because it goes outside of the boundaries of the segment. So what we need to do is we just need to make our, let's hit clear here, and let's make our spawner, let's make it Z900. And that way it leaves a little, or let's say 800. Now it leaves a little border on the edge if we hit. Now if we go up to the segment and hit move, Every time we hit move now, it's going to place these in a different location. I think five is too many. So let's just, let's be simple first. Let's just say there's three in every case. Now we're going to say move. Now there's still some issues you can see where when things run into each other, they overlap. That's something I'm still working on. But I think this is enough to give us the basic idea. Now, we are kind of using some extra poly here because we're rendering this bottom area, which we're never going to see. But one cool thing that we could do as well is we could show, uh, I could show how if we go here and we hit clear, and we go to the tourist spawner, we could say offset Y minimum and maximum. We could say let's offset these by 250. Let's see what that is, 250 and 250. And now we say move. Ah, now we get this, which is kind of cool too. Let's see how that looks. Or let's m make it a little bit less so, so we get the bottom buried. So if we say 225, so they're not sticking out of the ground like that. Still sticking out a little bit, right? Yeah, let's do it a little bit better. Let's go 220. Still a teeny bit showing. Say two, let's say 200. There we go. So now we're going to get a bunch of these to fly through.
there we have a segment. Now also, they're kind of sticking through the wall here. We could eliminate that by, let's make it a little bit narrower so it doesn't go through the wall either. And we'll say, let's go 1750. So now we've got a little border around the whole thing. Now if we hit move, we should get them. They still go through the wall a little bit, but you know what, I'm going to leave it for now. Or no, I'm not. That doesn't look too good. So let's go in here and change this to 1500. That should do it. Let's leave it for now. And now all we have to do is we have to take this segment and since we've modified it, we have to hit apply up here. So we update the prefab. Or actually, no, let's not do that because that's not a corridor only segment. Let's rename this and call it corridor torus form segment. Now we're going to go and drag that into our segments folder corridor, corridor torus one segment. There it is. Now we can delete it from here. And now we want to update our sequence to use that new segment. So if we look at sequences here, and we go to corridor, our corridor sequence, it's not going to use the corridor only segment anymore. We're going to drag the corridor torus one segment in here. Let's save. And I believe we will have a level where we are flying through these obstacles. Let's hit play. And here we have it. bad, huh? So the next thing we can do is we can put some we can put some mines in there so we have something to shoot at. So let's drag this out and we're going to add another spawner. We'll clear this out. We'll add another spawner. So we're going to say game object, create empty. I'm going to drag it up here. Make sure it's set to zero, zero, zero. And we're going to call this mine spawner. And this is going to have a scatter volume spawner. So instead of a surface spawner, it's a volume spawner. Now, a volume spawner needs a collider because it uses the collider to determine where to put things. So we're going to put a box collider in here and we're going to change its size to be, again, a little bit less than the full width of 2000. We'll say 1750. And let's say 900 by 900. So now you see we've got a box in here. So now in that box, it will spawn things. And so what do we want to spawn in here? We've got to put an item prefab in there. So if we go up to our items, and I'm looking for the mine. Oh, that's actually here in opponents. So we've got this gravity mine that we recognized from the original demo. Actually, let's take this and duplicate it. and we're going to call it a Tron mine because we're going to change its texture. Edit, duplicate, and we're going to duplicate its material and I'm going to change its, its texture to be 
the grid texture, this red grid texture. And we don't need the bump mapping on it either. So we can change this to Marmoset Specular IBL. We don't need bump specular IBL. We don't need that texture on it. So let's change this to 5 by 5 or let's say 10 by 10 and we'll lower the specular intensity down. We've got the specular sharpness way up and the diffuse color is just going to be nice and bright. And so it's called Tron Mine. So now we have something that will fit in there. So I'm going to go back to our prefabs opponents. And here's Tron Mine. We're going to update the material on Tron Mine, or not the mine, so that instead of Gravity Mine, we're going to call it a Tron Mine. And there it is, down here, we can see it moving around. And I'm going to take this material, I think that's too much, 10 by 10, let's do 5 by 5. And that should be all we need to do to update that mine. So now we go back up to our mine spawner here, and we go back to find that opponent, which is called Tron Mine, which, why didn't, oh, it didn't update the, it just didn't update the thumbnail here yet but it is updated. So we're going to take that Tron mine and put it here in item prefab. That's what we want to scatter around the volume. And let's say we want three to four of these. And we'll say we'll give them random rotations all around. So now if we go back up here to our Taurus 1 segment and see it says we only have one spawner. If we hit clear, it should find the new spawner. There it is. Now we have a mine spawner and a tourist spawner. So now if we hit move, yep, there we go. There are these Tron mines floating around to shoot. Let's hit apply on the segment. And then we can delete the segment from here and we can hit play. wrong. You know what's wrong is I forgot to set that collider, not the collider, yeah, the box collider to be a trigger only. So if we go back up here to the segment that we're working with, corridor, nothing was working right in there and that's why. So if we look here at the, let's clear this, at the mine spawner, see this box collider here? You have to say is trigger. See, the problem was that I, I had this whole thing filled with the collider, so it wasn't letting my craft move, and everything was moving out of the way because it was interacting with us as if it was really a physics collider, and we don't want that. We just want it to be a trigger, which basically means don't do anything except let us use it for our own purposes of spawning things inside of it. So now let's apply that again. Delete, and let's play one more time. <laughs> Started out like that far back. I would do some uh, next. I'll, I would do some artistic tweaks on this. The the mines are a little hard to see, being black, and they're a little small. But uh, that is everything that goes in to making a level. All the elements are here. We made a mesh that defined the the uh, the hull of the level. In this case, a corridor. It might be a tube, or it might just be a landscape. We s made an obstacle, and we scattered it around inside. We put materials on it, and we. Uh, scattered uh, the mines around with a volume spawner and with those elements you can make any of the levels that we have so far in Rift Wars. So that's it for this tutorial. I 
think with uh, a careful viewing of this, we all should be able to make make levels, and that's pretty exciting.